In this video, we're going to discuss some basic definitions that we need to be familiar with so that when we use them and when we hear them, uh, we know what we're talking about. So the definitions we'll be talking about are elements, atoms, molecules, and ions. And we discussed some of these in another video uh, about mixtures and substances, but it's good to review them just so we're clear on what they are. So first, elements. Now, elements are substances, as we discussed in an earlier video, and they are a substance that cannot be separated or broken down by chemical means. So can't be broken down chemically. Now, it doesn't mean they can't be broken down at all. It's just we can't do it with chemical reactions. So examples would be sodium, aluminum, hydrogen, chlorine, oxygen, and so on. Now, the one thing to mention is that some elements in their freestanding state uh, are like this. So uh, another example would be argon or krypton. Um, these guys are by themselves. They float around as atoms. Atoms. Oh, if you can see that. There we go. Um, and these are kind of the what are held to be the indivisible units of chemistry. And in another video, we'll talk about the structure of the atom and actually that it's not indivisible, that you can break it down. But for all for the chemist's purposes, most of the time, atoms can't be broken down. And they're the basic building blocks of matter. But anyway, so most elements flow, fly around or sit around as singleton atoms. Whereas these right here are actually what's called diatomic. And we'll talk about that a little bit more in a second. Uh, the other ones are Br2. I2, N2, and I think I got it. Bring, oh, yes. Uh, so these are the elements. They're also they're known as elements, but they're diatomic, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. But anyway, these are elements. They can't be broken down chemically. They're basically the simplest uh, building blocks in nature. And atoms, as we already discussed, are the building blocks of nature. They are what compounds are made of. Um, they are the, the primary form that elements take. Of course, this is an exception, but most of the time elements are form or come when they're by themselves. If that ever happens, they are in this kind of singleton form, this atomic form. And like I said, they come together to form compounds. So, well, what about compounds? This is actually one we didn't mention above. But compounds are just more than one element. So atoms with more or substances I should say, with more than one element. So examples would be CO, H2O, CO2, NaCl, right? These have more than one element mixed together. And obviously, as you can see, more than one atom. Um, so we discussed a little bit of this as well, so I would check out the mixtures, mixtures and substances video if you want more information. Now, let's move on to molecule. A molecule is generally the smallest sample of a substance. Just like an atom is maybe the smallest sample of an element, a molecule would be known as the smallest sample of a substance. And this would, you know, again, include things like CO, H2O, CO2, uh, also would include H2O2, the diatomics. Um, basically because you can't get carbon monoxide in any smaller form than simply a carbon bonded with an oxygen, right? There's no other way to get it besides that. So that is a molecule. Uh, things like Na, Kr, Al, these are elements, but they're also atoms, and they're also in some sense molecules. They're called monatomic. Monatomic. Mon meaning one, so one atom. So monatomic molecules. It's kind of odd. But you can still call these, they're called elements, they're called atoms, and they're called molecules. There's a lot of things going on there. Uh, H2, Cl2, Br2, etc., the ones I mentioned above, are diatomic, because as you might expect, di means two. Uh, so there you go. Um, ch -ch -ch, what else? Um, okay. So moving on to, let's see, we've discussed molecules, we've discussed atoms, we've discussed elements. We've discussed all that stuff. We've discussed compounds. Uh, and as you might expect, polyatomic, here's the last one actually, polyatomic molecules are more than two, generally three or more. Um, so you have things like H2O, NO2, uh, FeCl2, stuff like that. More than two uh, atoms together, I should say. So you've got things, you've got here three, um, you've got three here, you've got three here, and so on. Uh, so generally more than three atoms together. Diatomic is generally two, often related to these when the two are the same. Um, 
when you've got something like NaCl, that's usually binary, but we won't get into the details there. Uh, all you need to know is you get your monatomics, your diatomics, which are your Brinkelhoff, Br. This is the little way to remember. And then you get your polyatomic molecules, which is more than one atom mixed together. These are also compounds. These are compounds. Um, well, actually, these are elements, technically. Uh, but there, these are molecules. You can see keeping sh track of what's what here can be confusing. But luckily, you're not going to be asked most of the time about what's what. Because in the end, it's all convention. It's just what we call them. All right, uh, what about ions? Well, ions are charged particles, whether they be atoms or molecules or anything like that. Um, so an example would be sodium. Sodium, normally, if there's no nothing written up here, it's just sodium zero. It's neutral. But let's say we wrote Na plus. Well, this would mean it has a charge of plus one. And if you look at the video on how to count neutrons and how to uh, figure out charges on atoms um, and the number of electrons in an atom, it will become clear why things get charges and other things do not. So chlorine gets a minus one. You should just written chlorine minus. Sometimes you'll see uh, Fe three plus. He's got a charge of three plus three. This should actually yeah, charge of plus three, uh, and so on. And you'll check out the video on, like I said, on counting electrons or figuring out the electrons, I forget what I called it, in uh, in an atom uh, of a charged particle uh, for more information about that. The last thing to say, polyatomic ions. So you can have groups of atoms linked together that have a charge. So an example would be hydroxide. This has a charge of minus, minus one. Charge of minus one. And it's the entire entity that has this charge. Uh, you can't really say this minus one belongs to the H necessarily. It belongs to this entire unit. And there are other examples of this. Um, basically, it's going to be any kind of uh, unit that has more than one atom, more than one element, essentially, uh, that has some kind of charge. So let me see if I can come up with some other examples. I wish I had them listed here. Let me just turn to my table, just because I don't want to give you the wrong uh, give you the wrong charges on things, because that might confuse you and that would not be good. Okay, so here's some examples. Uh, if you're in Newton's chemistry, you can look at table F for some other charge for some other polyatomic ions. Carbonate would be one, CO3 two minus, phosphate PO4 three minus, um, sulfide S. Well, that's actually a a uh, ion, just a, a simple ion. Uh, chlorate ClO3 uh, minus, perchlorate ClO4 minus, and so on. Right? You can have a bunch of these polyatomic ions, and they're something that act as a unit, as a group, uh, with a charge.